I'm escaping to the one place that hasn't been corrupted by capitalism. The Wrestling Life. Hey everybody, it's the Wrestling Life, it's episode 368. It is uh, mid to late March of 2024. I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. Liam, we have so much to talk about this week. And as always, so many things we cannot talk about on the first and only wrestling podcast. I want to apologize to you. We uh, <laughs> are recording this about an hour and a half later than we normally do because uh, I had a family emergency this morning and uh, fell asleep <laughs> uh, this afternoon. And you tried calling me up a telephone and the phone was right next to me and I didn't hear it and I didn't feel it vibrating. So sorry, pal. I have no idea what the heck happened. I've just passed away, I think. All right. Well, <laughs> Uh, heavy sleeper, you know, it happens, I guess. Sorry, see, by apologizing on the air, I uh, <laughs> you forced me, <laughs> you forced me to accept the apology. I forced you to be magnanimous <laughs> and not be like, Look, what the heck's wrong with you? <laughs> be like, You're I'm sorry that you weren't awake. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry <laughs> that you couldn't wake yourself up <laughs> at 7 30 p.m. You're like, uh, that's you're almost, fine. You're an almost 40 year old man. What the hell's wrong with you? <laughs> you can't, you can't do that. No. If I, if I, if I take it to the air. Exactly. That's the well, way to do it. WWE is continuing their build to WrestleMania. AEW has some new talent in and, um, new Japan still exists. So <laughs> start with the, uh, WrestleMania build. We got some, uh, we're filling out the tag team, uh, title match, ladder match at that show. We have uh, Sami Zayn and Gunther for the Intercontinental title with uh, uh, Chad Gable in Sami Zayn's corner as his his Mick, I guess, if we're uh, going with a Rocky theme here. And uh, Logan Paul will be defending against Kevin Owens and Randy Orton. In a three-way that I had to see. And um, The Rock did a rock concert on SmackDown. And um, it feels like uh, we're building to a Rock and Cody Rhodes singles match. When in fact, we're building to a Rock and Roman Reigns versus Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins tag match. Which is just a setup for a Roman Reigns-Cody Rhodes uh, singles match the next night. Roman Reigns is never on the show. The Rock has been on the show more than Roman Reigns has been on the show. Uh, maybe uh, helping the imp- give the impression that uh, The Rock and uh, Cody Rhodes are overshadowing everyone else in this feud. What do you think? Yeah, I think that's a a really fair assessment of things. I don't. <laughs> Uh, I don't uh, know how anyone could watch the TV, um, whether you think it's entertaining or not. And I think there's been some good moments among the various, very long talking segments that these folks have produced. Um, but whether you think it's entertaining or not, uh, yeah, if if the Cody Rhodes versus Roman Reigns in January felt like the biggest match the company could do. And now it feels like a footnote in this uh, increasingly bizarre Dwayne Johnson midlife crisis heel turn that we are witnessing uh, uh, unfold before us. So The Rock has stolen Miko Satomura's uh, nickname of the final boss. Mm Mm-hmm. And um, Brian Gortz says that he came up with it himself. <laughs> like, at what point do you think Brian Gortz sold his soul? Like, I mean, when he followed Dwayne out of the company and <laughs> became his Jimmy Hart. When <laughs> what year was that? Uh, I mean, he did stick around for a long time. It wasn't until like, yeah. But regardless, 
Um, the rock concert. Um, probably the weakest of the three rock concerts, I think. But uh, uh, still mildly entertaining, I would say. He didn't play. He doesn't play the guitar himself anymore. <laughs> huh. I uh, oh, I miss. Yeah, the, he, he had the had guys. A... He had like a blues. They were in Memphis, and so he had, I guess, some local blues musicians playing for him, and he was just sitting and singing. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it was just it's like oh, that's interesting. He, him, like playing his out uh, his Willie Nelson guitar out of tune was, uh, I thought, one of the. Uh, one of the accoutrements that always needed to accompany a rock concert, but he has uh, he has evolved the form. Incredible, really incredible. I th- so that segment. I mean, it was fine. It was entertaining. He was also like half still baby facing himself because they were in one of his seven hometowns. <laughs> yeah, there was that. So he's still like popping the crowd and making local references and making pop culture references and. And having all this fun. And then in like the last two minutes, he tried to get like real serious and be sinister and talk about how he's going to make Cody Rhodes bleed and and make him bleed in front of his mother, who's going to be sitting at ringside. Cody's mother is going to be sitting at ringside. Um, and uh, and then he sang a sinister version of his uh, of his song for Moana, which I did think was pretty was pretty uh, clever. But um yeah i don't know if if this was setting up a cody rhodes versus dwayne johnson single match i feel like we would be able to evaluate whether all of this is good or effective a little bit better (laughs) um but as it stands it's uh feels a little disjointed well roman and cody are scheduled for a face-to-face on this friday smackdown so maybe they'll get it back on track there maybe they won't (laughs) we'll uh... see yeah, Roman is is a bit of an afterthought to this point, and uh, nobody thinks about Seth Rollins at all. So, <laughs> yeah, there's that. There's that. He's uh, he's already like Cody Rhodes' little buddy in mm-hmm. the uh, in the build to begin with, and then uh, yeah, he's not. No one, no one. He also has another title match that he's not doing a very good job of building, or that the company's not doing a very good job of building with uh, Drew McIntyre. The storyline is that Drew is mad <laughs> that he's not. Uh, he's afraid Seth is going to get hurt wrestling Dwayne and Roman, and therefore weasel out of the title match. I think. I think that was the point of their their promo segment on Monday. I didn't get that at all. So uh, you well, got more about uh, th- than I did. Well, he he talked about how like he'll he'll cart him down to the ring himself if he has to. But that seems to be the point is that he's not focused on WrestleMania. He's not focused on Drew, but also, um, yeah, because <laughs> uh, nobody. No, so I guess not even Seth Rollins cares about that belt, <laughs> even in storyline. <laughs> I. I it... Bizarre. Anyway, they uh, performed in front of the, like their eighth consecutive television sellout house. <laughs> right. <laughs> so it doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, I mean, we've talked about this. When you're hot, you can do no wrong. And yeah. they can do no wrong right now. And yeah, people are getting their money's worth. They get to see all the stars they like. And, and uh, you know, they get uh, swept up in the magic of a live WWE event. So they're they're doing something right. Um, so it's a wonderful variety show. <laughs> that's right um, uh, and our good friend Phil is taking a break from um, the vacation home he has in Orlando Florida with all the NXT girls and we'll be at uh, we'll be at Raw in Chicago uh, coming up here yeah I'll be on Raw Monday and then uh, Dwayne will be on the following Raw in Brooklyn and then uh, we're at Wrestlemania and uh, Phil's going to be at WrestleMania, too. He said, you can't have WrestleMania in Philadelphia without Phil. <laughs> <laughs> sure. He also, he he also the host like uh, like uh, Hogan was that one year. Seems like what's going on. Yeah. Uh, he also did post on his wife's birthday the other day. Um, no photos of his wife. No photo he, of her. OK, just making sure <laughs> he posted a photo of his, of his dog. Mm-hmm. And uh, him walking his dog. 
And then uh, it said he wished his wife a happy birthday. And then his wife posted photos of herself and uh, none of her husband or her dog. Hmm. Probably probably just coincidence, you know? They probably took a lot of photos together, but like, you know, they didn't like how they looked in them or something. Or, you know, maybe the file got corrupted, you know? Sure. Could be any number of a thousand things. Yeah, really could. Really could. Much more serious note, Uh, we finally got the corporate officers uh, identified in the uh, lawsuit from Janelle Grant against Vince McMahon, John Laurinaitis, and WWE, Mm -hmm. and we probably owe uh, Uncle Paul an apology, not our actual Uncle Paul, but Paul Levesque (laughs) an apology. I don't think we need to apologize to our actual Uncle Paul for anything. Um, No. He's not related to Frankie Kazarian, by the way, even though they're the same person no but if you want i was gonna say if you want to know what if you want to like picture in your head what our uncle paul looks and acts and talks like just imagine present day frankie kazaria yeah Less um, oh lord uh we yeah we need a uh a a uh, an apology to paul Levec. he was not uh corporate officer number one mm. someone screwed that up uh, the the corporate officers named in the uh, in the lawsuit were Nick Khan. Mm-hmm. Nick Khan is corporate officer number one. What do you know about that? Uh, Brad Bloom, who was a CEO of OO COO of the company at one point. Uh, Stephanie McMahon, who just kind of get, gets a drive by mm-hmm. mention, and uh, Brian Nurse, who was the head of the legal department. So. Um, Mystery solved. And uh, Nick Khan does not come out of his uh, looking, smelling like roses, but uh, I think he'll survive. Yeah. I mean, they're as long as they can say they didn't have direct knowledge of the alleged crimes uh, or abuse, um, they're probably going to be just fine. <laughs> So and uh, and yeah, uh, I guess good for Paul, good for Paul and Bruce um, to not be named directly. Um, they can uh, they can continue to to factually say that they are not named in the lawsuit and that uh, I suppose they can continue claiming they uh, they didn't uh, they didn't know anything about anything. And uh, I, I wonder, I wonder if Paul now, if Paul now that his wife's been implicated in some uh, direct or indirect way in the lawsuit, I wonder if Paul's had time to read it yet. It seems unlikely, but that's the case. Mm. Um, I forget who tweeted it. I would like to give credit, but uh, someone said, "Well, all the uh, the WWE uh, stands now have to reckon with the fact that either." Paul and Stephanie are really divorced mm-hmm. <laughs> or uh, everyone knew. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> those are uh, those are the two options. <laughs> no one can have their cake and eat it too. Correct. And at this point, <laughs> I didn't know at the time why, but I've always been rooting for <laughs> for it to come out that Paul and Stephanie are divorced or, you know, the closest thing that people that rich come to getting divorced i i figured it was because you want to marry stephanie mcmahon oh no <laughs> you sure about that i wouldn't i would not you know necessarily <laughs> although it seems like maybe she there's some dubious uh moral claims what <laughs> based on what sh- her being named in this huh. doesn't exactly make her seem like a cool person so but no sure. that's not why it's it's more because i just want to see the prophecy that bret hart's ex-wife threw upon paul Levesque in 1997 come true i think that's that's um that's more than fair okay uh ronda rousey has a book coming out mm-hmm. and uh she is going around selling it some excerpts um 
were released this week. And uh, this is her second autobiography. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but the main ex- 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 excerpts that came out, and then she did like a something of a of a YouTube stream with her sister and her mom and her co-author, where she just said that uh, WWE was a quote unquote shit show, and uh, she can't go back there, and she doesn't intend to go back there. And um, uh, John Laurinaitis and Bruce Pritchard can go F themselves. <laughs> and uh, in the excerpt from the book, she was talking about how WWE performs in Saudi Arabia, a country where women's uh, women don't have rights and how Vince McMahon would love to roll things back to a time where that's the case. Well, he was spending a lot of time there before he got uh, before he got ousted for the second time. <sighs> You imagine if he just like uh, he shows up in court <laughs> wearing the the full <laughs> like full Freddie Blassie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Probably shouldn't la- shouldn't laugh about this. No. But... Just picture it though. <laughs> yeah, just picture. The thing him is with... that you can picture it. <laughs> yeah, and it's not like super far fetched. I mean, you remember the neck brace from uh, the first uh, from the steroid mm-hmm. trial? Mm-hmm. Just mm-hmm. except this time he's got. He's got the, the Freddie Blassie uh, headdress on. Right. Instead of uh, trying to garner sympathy via uh, in- injury, he could try to garner sympathy by uh, professing that he has found a law. Yes. I could imagine him, though, showing up to trial uh, with with a walker or something and really mm-hmm. play up the fact that he's 80. He's about to be 80 years old. Work for Snuka. <sighs> This company. Uh, any 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 big thoughts on uh, on Ronda Rousey's uh, <laughs> the worst person you know making making some salient points and telling yeah. Bruce <laughs> and Johnny to go off themselves. Yeah, I mean it's it is I suppose good that someone with her position. I mean, I her her mainstream stardom has long since fallen, but um, someone in her position naming names. <laughs> Um, another point to Paul Levesque's favor, by the way, is that she said that that she thought he was, by all accounts, a pretty good guy. So uh, before going on to, you know, be uh, much more uh, unkind to Johnny and uh, and Bruce and, and Vince. So, um, yeah, I think it's good that she is publicly saying it and that she is uh continuing to call attention to it obviously you can say that she has a motive because she's trying to sell books and that's true um yeah i think and we just go back to that that weekend everything broke where she talked about how if if bruce is still in the company that vince uh vince still will have his hands in things um and who knows if that's the case at this point but uh yeah it seems like she has a pretty sour view if if it wasn't clear from like how she spoke and tweeted and commented on instagram while she was still with the company it seems like she has a pretty negative uh view of most of the people in power there so uh yeah that's that's uh it's it's quite an indictment for someone who was given a lot of money and was a you know kind of rolled out the red carpet for her in a way they really haven't done for an outsider especially not an outsider uh who's a woman before to still come out of it with such a negative view and be so public about how uh how rough her time was there and how low how lowly she thinks of uh so several of the men who were in power or are still in power there so i that's it's definitely noteworthy and it's something to uh maybe just remind people that this story has not completely gone away yet as much as the company might like it to oh boy you know how how little wrestling we actually talk about on this show (laughs) (laughs) how little wrestling we talk about on this here wrestling program Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. unreal um AEW, uh, they're building towards their Dynasty pay-per-view. 
uh, I'll say the number of Goodwill Osprey promos I'd seen in the previous eight years uh, was zero, and the number of Goodwill Osprey promos I've seen in the last eight days is two. <laughs> so <laughs> somewhere this guy learned how to talk. Yeah, I I give him a lot of credit um, because it's I think even he said when he was coming in that it's like, yeah, he could yell and shout in New Japan, but he also got to say the F word and <laughs> and like, you know, just kind of rant and swear. He didn't have to uh, like he wasn't confined to U.S. TV style promos yet. And he's doing a good job. He's he's feels very likable and charismatic. He's getting reactions from the crowd and he's building up his matches as he, as he speaks. So yeah, he's, he's doing a very good job. So who, who would have thunk it? And it's a, uh, you know, if it adds a dimension and it's uh Tony, like getting out in front of the inevitable criticism that all he does, all Osprey can do is have good matches and he's not a strong talker or a strong character. Well, so far, so good on just letting him go out there and talk for several minutes in a row. So, yeah, good, good for him. Good, good start. Uh, Mercedes Monet slash Monet uh, debuted. The the girl from Star Wars. Yeah, Mercedes Fernando. Um, going under the ring name of Mercedes Monet slash Monet. <laughs> <laughs> It depends where you choose to put the emphasis. See, the little uh, uh, the little uh, umlaut is over the E, um, so it definitely ends with A, but whether you go O or N <laughs> on your way to the A <laughs> seems to be a point of contention. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right. So she and um, Willow Nightingale... Might be about to feud. They, I thought they were going to team first against um, Sky Blue and Julia Hart, but instead they're already teasing uh, that uh, Willow's going to hit uh, Mercedes with a chair. Mm-hmm. And um, she will uh, Mercedes going to be feuding with the whole division? It looks like so. I got no problem with that. Yeah, line up, uh, line up opponents for uh for your new top women's star they're they're treating her like a star uh and so yeah it means some people like i wouldn't i wouldn't probably ever think that turning willa nightingale heel is a good idea (laughs) but if you're doing it in service of making her a credible threat for someone you want to position as your new top baby face and your new face of the entire division. That's as good of a reason as I think you're going to find. <laughs> um, like she's not turning to join the house of black or something. Uh, one could hope, but uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't turn her specifically, but obviously there's history there with, with her and Mercedes getting Mercedes getting injured, wrestling her last year. And also they've been doing this long-standing slow burn thing where Stokely is managing Willow and Stat and trying to get them to cheat and be evil. And uh, the with the thought being, I think, that Chris was going to be the one to turn, but maybe it'll be Willow who ends up turning. Or maybe they'll both turn. Who knows? Two titles changed, changed hands on this week's Dynamite with Okada winning the Continental title, and uh, which is apparently on, only going to be a yearly title. I, I've i hated everything about the Continental Championship <laughs> since it was introduced. I hate the modern Triple Crown, which no longer exists. And uh, so he... <laughs> This is an interview that uh, Tony Khan gave with a co- the Comic Book Nation podcast. <laughs> he says, whoever holds the title after November's annual full gear pay-per-view will get an automatic spot in the Continental Classic every year. 
However, the title holder will have to win the tournament final at World's End in order to keep their championship. What? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Why would you want to be? I don't know. It feels man. like you should just lay down on the. I guess, well, then you wouldn't be guaranteed a spot. So I don't know. I mean, it's like any of these secondary belts. It'll mean something if a star is holding it. <laughs> um, and... Yeah, so Okada's got it now. Right. So theoretically, it will mean something like when John Cena held the U.S. title. But when if he loses it to, I don't know, somebody that isn't really a push star down the line, then it won't feel as important anymore. So that's that's whether that should be the case. They certainly I don't think anyone thinks they need like, what is it now? Four male singles titles. Um, But. As always, this will feel more important because Okada has it and say the international championship will feel less important because Roderick Strong has that and uh, and and Adam, the actor, has the TNT belt now. Uh, So it will get a big reaction in the arenas, but everyone at home will turn the channel when he's defending it, I guess. Yeah, so uh, the Radar Superstar Adam Copeland is the new TNT champion mm-hmm. after a scintillating uh, I Quit match with Christian Cage. <laughs> Can... Tell me what you really think of that match. So, um, didn't like it. This will shock. <laughs> this will shock you. Um, if I could compliment anything, I thought they did some really good crowd. I didn't like the hockey spot too much i thought that was a little too cutesy and like a let's make a hashtag viral moment that will get retweeted by by the espn account it's a it's a house and, show spot and yeah. we just saw kevin owens and Sami Zayn do it six months ago right you knew i saw somebody i couldn't think of who did it but um but yes it's been done before putting on the jerseys felt like yeah it just felt like an attempt to uh get uh get uh, your your a clip of your match retweeted by ESPN or something, which doesn't seem like a good thing to put in your wrestling, in your ultra serious grudge match, uh, feud ending match. If if there's a god, um, and yeah, I I just thought it was plotting. I did think some of the other crowd brawling they did was good because they didn't just like punch each other once and then walk through the crowd to the next spot. So uh, good crowd brawling. You could tell these guys worked in the Attitude Era, not just because they're very old. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I guess I guess the baby face should win if you're going to have this feud last for this long. Um, but the finish took very long to set up and was very convoluted where they... Daniel Garcia and Daddy Magic run out and they help uh, Adam handcuff everyone to the ring ropes. And then he everyone being Christian kill switch (laughs) and Nick Wayne. Correct. Um, And then he kicks Christian in the balls a bunch, hits him in the balls with his spike bat and then threatens to hit him in the head with the spike bat. And uh, and Christian quits and, and Adam wins the title. Uh, so I thought that was very funny. It was. Yeah, whatever. The, the finish was kind of cute at the end when he did the bit with the spike bat. Um, but as far as I don't think I quit matches, there's very few of these that I think have been good. <laughs> um, Ever. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a short list. Uh, I like the Cena and Orton one which I know makes you cringe, but it's torture porn. <laughs> um, yeah. But other than that, I think that's the only way it can be good because otherwise it's just like a last man standing match, but worse because it's just a guy you do a spot and then the guy lays there. And instead of counting to 10, the ref has to shout into a microphone. What do you say? Do you want to quit? And then the wrestler has to while selling and breathing very hard. Um, say no or no or they have to do some you. acting yes they have to yeah it's which is yeah. you'd think would be right up adam the actor's a, uh, alley but uh no i i just think it's a it's an inherently tough to pull off stitch stipulation 
unless you're gonna do a sicko match like like uh like Cena and Orton did that time. Um so yeah, I don't I don't think this this was on paper the best uh it didn't accentuate the positives these that these men bring uh to whatever positives they bring at this point in their careers. But it's over. You you think they're probably gonna do a six man tag at the pay per view based off of the finish. I am praying that's not the case. But yeah, my always... take. Yeah, one of us will be right. My takeaway from that match was uh, Adam is being moved. The radar superstar Adam Copeland is going to be moved into the stink spot of having a, a wild six man uh, tag. Tornado tag match on every pay per view at uh, ten fifty five p.m. God help us! He did already do the the weird dive. He jumped off a ladder onto onto Kill Switch and and Nick Wayne. So he's already he's already doing the uh, the big dive spot. He's already taken that from from Steve. He seeing him, like seeing him do a dive at this age, um, just hammered home the point to me but the last time uh i remember seeing edge do a dive like that um he was so much smaller <laughs> <laughs> it was probably like i don't know 2011 era smackdown or something or i don't know maybe it was the even as far back as 08 in the ladder match he did with rick or something i don't right. know but it was a much smaller edge, and now he's 15 years older, and he's absolutely gigantic. <laughs> it's the biggest he's ever been. <laughs> it's, it's fascinating. Um, Let's see. Rampage did very well uh, in the ratings this week mm -hmm. because it was on immediately following Dynamite and, um, like, almost... Uh, let's see. Hundreds of thousands more people tuned in, <laughs> like two hundred thousand more people tuned in, because it was on immediately following Dynamite, mm -hmm. which begs the question: Why don't we just do this all the time? I mean, <laughs> other than for the wrestling podcasters and writers of the world who will complain about having to watch three hours of uh of wrestling in one night uh i would imagine that deep tbs the turner networks are gonna look at that and go well yeah <laughs> why are we putting this on at 10 p.m on on friday night when we could just be airing our 85th rerun of the accountant starring ben affleck in that time slot and just you know, just do it just do a live rampage every week it'll do better because it's live and because it's following uh, because it's following the two hour dynamite. So I, I think it's inevitable. <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't need a three hour. I don't need two, three hour shows to watch. Uh, I kind of like rampage, even with their weird sea show storylines, <laughs> like Soraya's brother versus cool hand. Ange, mm -hmm. um, which is a objectively terrible storyline, but also like, a perfect storyline for a wrestling sea show at the same time. It is a, uh, it's a, it's a real, uh, it contains multitudes, but um, no, I like, I, I think rampage is a fun little one hour show. It goes by in a flash because it's only an hour. Um, but I think I would just think they would look at that and go, well, we can keep getting 330 thousand viewers on Friday nights or we can move this after dynamite eventually and make it a three hour block and get a bigger uh, return on our investment. To me, I'm watching three hours of wrestling, whatever night rampage is on anyway, <laughs> minimum because it was, it's on Friday nights and uh, I immediately follows SmackDown most Friday nights. And, um, not only that, but Impact loves running pay-per-views on Friday nights. And when New Japan runs pay-per-view in the United States, it's on a Friday night. So 
everybody just loves running Friday nights. So rampage removing would actually be a less, a less uh, one less thing to uh, it, to cover on a Friday. Night. It, it would be great for me. Um, it would be great for me because then I also don't have to wait around for spoilers to come in from rampage mm. uh, from the building on Wednesday nights. So yeah. Um, yeah, so they're building still to uh dynasty there. Samoa Joe and Swerve is, is the apparent title match, although we haven't gotten to really start telling our stories yet. We're still a month out, mm-hmm. and uh, we really just know uh Osprey and uh Danielson so far, and the finals of the tag team. Uh, ter- tag team title tournament, mm-hmm. and what else am I forgetting here? Is that um, it? As far as what they've officially announced, or what what you think they're setting up? As far as what they've officially announced, it's just those two things. I believe so. Yes. <laughs> All um, right. Yeah. Uh, I have a question about this tag tournament, and I think it's a question a lot of people are asking. Yeah. Um, why aren't John Moxley and Claudio in this tournament after they beat uh, FTR clean at the last pay per view? Yeah, there's no explanation for it. <laughs> and I'm I might I would guess there's a real life reason why because Moxley hasn't been on the show at all uh, the last couple of weeks. So if it's a, an injury or some other personal reason, is it because he's going to win the t- the IWGP Heavyweight Championship from <laughs> Tetsu United at that Chicago show? Uh, I, I don't know. Is it because they don't want I- him to win the tag belts, but they also don't want to beat him in a tournament? Maybe. Again, that's what Claudio's there for, you would think. Correct. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I just, I just think it's fine. Uh, like we said with the Hangman thing at the last pay per view, real life does get in the way, and he's booked in other promotions. There could be uh, numbers of reasons why he isn't in real life but on television him and claudio have been a tag team and they beat the former tag team champions in a bloody war at the last pay-per-view that went for seven hours um so it's weird that there's not been any kind of explanation on tv and Um, the guys the guys they beat are in the tournament mm -hmm. and uh and their stupid fake rankings that i hope they've already forgotten about seems like they have (laughs) They hate which they have released twice since announcing they were bringing them back at the beginning of the year. They've released them twice. Um, they were Claudio and Moxley were listed, and uh, and uh, yeah, not one of the top 10 teams though, apparently, <laughs> because it was a 10 team tournament. <laughs> mm-hmm. Apparently, not <laughs> apparently. Uh, How are we doing? The Sean Dean and his friend, the infantry, <laughs> Harley Bravo. Yeah. I always think that's a fake name. <laughs> I always have to look <laughs> it up and make sure that I'm that it's an actual person. Yeah. Um they're in it and they won actually on uh, on collision in a in a weird, you know, House of Black did a job and weird Ma- <laughs> Malachi wasn't in the match. It's weird. They did they did one of those jobs though where they they took 99.99% of the match. Mm-hmm. And then the guys slipped on a bad appeal. Speaking of which, what do you think of that great Chris Jericho and Hulk <laughs> match this week? Oh, man. That was really classic. What I love is that I think whatever people have always said is that uh, what John Cena and Brock Lesnar should have done at that SummerSlam is uh, Brock beats him and beats him and beats him like he did. But then uh, Brock rolls him up in a jackknife to get the pin at the end. That would have been a way better match that way. I think people have always said that. Uh, no, it's it is classic vintage Chris Jericho, I would say, in that he did the job. No one can dispute that he, quote unquote, put Hook over. Uh, but boy, it doesn't feel like Hook got a lot out of that. Um, and considering after the match, Chris Jericho is the one getting interviewed um, about whether or not Hook earned his respect by beating his ass and then pinning him. Uh, feels like that was more about Chris Jericho than it was about Hook. But, uh, you know, 
he, people can people could just keep saying that he's he's putting everyone over. He put over Will Hobbs, he put over Takeshita, now he's put over put over Young Hook, and he's definitely not doing the thing that Dusty did with Magnum TA, where you just attach yourself to an act that's much more popular than yourself. He's definitely not doing that. He's definitely and he and he proved that because you know he did a job. So that's that's how you know he's he's on the up and up. I think everyone is now on to Jericho. And I think everyone's on the same page that Chris needs to at minimum go home for a year. Mm-hmm. Minimum go home for a year. Ideally, just go home. <laughs> minimum go home for a year. It's like I know this is a television contract year for them, and I can see Tony feeling like he's a name and I want him on my show. Make him an announcer then. (laughs) I know Tony's been allergic to authority figures, but make him a general manager then. I would, again, I agree. My my preference would be that he just goes home. (laughs) But if you feel you must put him on TV, find a non-wrestling role for him to be in for the foreseeable future because he is not doing you any good. And there was a time where he was drawing one of, if not the biggest quarters on the show every week. And that time has long since passed. So he's not getting big reactions in the arena. He's not pulling big numbers on television. If it were anybody else, They'd already be out of that spot, I think. <laughs> so what are we doing here? No earthly idea. Um, Yoda Suji won the New Japan Cup, defeating uh, the all-time winningest New Japan Cup wrestler of all time, Hiroki Goto, <laughs> in the finals. <laughs> really feels like a nice cold promotion. And um, yeah, we'll see. Hey, they're selling a lot of tickets in Chicago. Yep. So there's that. Unlike uh, um, AEW last time they were in Chicago, unlike them, uh, New Japan is selling a lot of tickets to their Chicago pay-per-view next month. And uh, problem is, oh, as always, they're book they're um, they're running like 18 shows before then, so they have some stuff announced, but like Naito versus Moxley is announced for that show. You have no idea if it's going to be a title match until after uh, Naito defends his title at uh, Secure Genesis on April 6th. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just New Japan is, is stuck between being a small regional promotion <laughs> and an international promotion. Um, and their business model is still that of a regional wrestling promotion for the 1970s because it has to be correct and uh i just it it seems very very difficult for them to get out of the spot they're in yeah this has to be just like a a growing pains period like you you have no choice one would think but just start making the guys you should have been making for the last four years that you didn't (laughs) That you let Okada beat all of them as he walked out of your company. Um, yeah, just gotta start having them win a lot and hope hope they catch on. Um, I don't I I don't know what their business is in Japan, how they're drawing there. Like you said, they have one one big show in America coming up, but um, yeah, I like I I always try to look at look at it of like you know just because it's not working for the American audience doesn't mean they're it's not working at all. So like maybe, maybe we're getting the building blocks and in another year or two, the whole world will have Yoda Suji fever. But as of now, yeah, as, a, as a, <laughs> as someone looking from afar looks, looks like ice cold and it's a bunch of, you're pushing guys who are not ready. Uh, and you're no longer have your safety net of Okada and Jay White and Osprey. Um, you have Naito, who is on his last legs, figuratively and literally, perhaps. Um, and then you have guys like Shingo and Evil, who have been world champion, but are not consistently pushed at that level. Um, and 
yeah, below that, it's 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 the guys who are just always around, like Goto and Yoshihashi and and all those guys. I mean, frick, they even they even ran off Tamatanga finally. Like even even he's gone now. So like their 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 list of like even like upper middle card guys is getting small. So yeah, it's now just gotta hope you picked the right young guys and just have them start beating everybody and hope you stumble onto somebody that both the Japanese fans and perhaps international fans look at as a big giant star, the way they looked at people like Okada or, or, or whoever. And, uh, you know, in the meantime, I guess you have some band-aid gaijins being brought in like, like uh, Nick Nemeth and, and, uh, and Riddle. So there's, that's, it's just, yeah, feels like a growing pains promotion right now. Well, 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 I would like to thank the uh, good people at All Elite Wrestling for having me as their guest at uh, last week's big business show in Dynamite. Yes, it was just a media ticket, but uh, they put the media in the hard cam section and uh, they did not give me a media sticker, but uh, they hosted me and uh, would like to thank my good friends. <laughs> At all elite wrestling. That's yeah, that's uh you were in I don't even know, did we even really touch on you being in the building for another of Mercedes debuts? It it's fine. Like whatever. It's old news if you follow the show on uh on Twitter, but yeah, I mean it's old news in real life too. It's like nine days ago, <laughs> which is a million years ago in uh in True. pro wrestling. I don't know, it was cool, it was cool. I I got a tear in my eye when she's talking about her brother. Yeah, it was really uh, sweet. I think again, it, I did not think she was lighting the world on fire with promos in new, in what she was doing in New Japan, but she's similarly, I would say, to Will Osprey, two for two so far as far as cutting, you know, cutting uh, promos in front of in front of large crowds, and and she's doing fine, and she's getting good reactions, so. Uh, she's off to the races, and obviously they already have lots of uh, opponents set up for her. So, yeah, good times, good times, good times. They had a lot of they had a lot of people in Boston too. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, well, I have no voice. I haven't had a voice <laughs> all day. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, yeah. So, um. Let's uh next week I am going to a uh book event. Uh the Becky uh, for Becky Lynch's book N- The Man Not Your Average Average Girl. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh where Becky's going to talk up her book and then uh sign copies of it. So naturally I uh I pre-ordered this book uh on Amazon months ago. Mhm. And uh, so that is still coming. And then uh, I'd buy two tickets to this event and uh, they come with a signed copy of the book. So now I'm going to have a minimum of three copies of this book in in my home. And then I'm probably going to buy the audio book too. Like, so like I, if this book does really well, I think, I think, uh, a lot of it is just because I bought four copies of it. I was going to say, you will make up a, a not insignificant percentage of the total gross sales of this book. Big fan of uh, of uh, Rebecca Quinn. And, Are you? Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'll be going to Washington, D.C. to uh, see her speak and uh, probably get a photo next week. So I'm, I'm excited about that. Fortunately, that means no show next week. And uh, but the following week is the uh, WrestleMania final WrestleMania build, the WrestleMania go home show. I know you're super excited for uh, Carmelo Hayes and Trick Williams and uh, Ilya Dragunov and Tony D'Angelo at uh, NXT San Deliver on Saturday morning, April 6th. <laughs> what, are, what are we doing? We'll also have that to preview. And uh, we have we'll have a, a lot of things to get into here in two weeks. Uh, is there anything else you would like to cover right now? 
Uh, no, I think that uh, that about covers it. Other than yes, get your get your votes in now, folks. Will I watch the NXT show this year? We'll find out. I'm voting no. <laughs> I will always vote no. I, wa- I watched like two of them, so <laughs> okay, in the past year. So, all right, it's not nothing. All right, till next time, everybody. I'm Ethan, and I'm Liam. We'll be back soon with more stories from the wrestling life. Bye bye. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Now, here are this week's bonus features. All right, so this is what everyone's been waiting for. Tell me about the Cheers bar. Um, so... The uh, the outside is the exterior that they used for the exterior shots on the show. Mm-hmm. Um, you walk down the stairs. It's very surreal. You uh, walk down the steps and um, uh, the Cheers uh, theme song is playing over a, uh, over a set of speakers as you approach the entrance. <laughs> and then uh, you go inside and um, that's where the similarities pretty much stop uh, so they, they don't like try to mo- model the the actual bar to well, look the, like okay so the bar itself uh, uh, is much smaller and then they have we're like uh, hey is there a gift shop or something here and I, yeah, you, uh, you go upstairs. There's a gift shop and a uh, a set bar, uh, set up with cardboard cutouts of the cast that you could uh, take photos with. And the the bar itself is like the bar. I'm talking about the physical bar. Is mm-hmm. the bar from the, from the show, and it's in a room that's like a thirty eh, percent uh, replica of of uh, of the bar on the show, of the bar room on the show. So uh, mixed bag. I mean, very very cool. Definitely glad I went, but. Uh, uh, it wasn't yeah, like should. walking into the show. And it was until you opened the door to go <laughs> into the bar. <laughs> until you actually go inside. Yes. Eh. Well, I mean, I guess it's cool that it exists at all. And yeah. Yeah. At least they have some memorabilia and everything from the show. But yeah, I don't I don't know. I don't know what I guess that's what that's for, though, right? People, most people aren't actually going there to like drink. I would think that's a. I I guess I don't know. Like, uh, there was a thirty minute wait to eat there. Oh wow! Okay. At like three thirty in the afternoon. Um. So I was like, "Do you think the owners like hate having to keep it this kitschy '80s place?" <laughs> Do you think they like secretly hate the television show and having to? to uh, maintain this licensing agreement or whatever they did right. with. <laughs> and it's like, well, maybe, but also there's a 30 minute wait for lunch at three 30 in the afternoon. So True. they probably do. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you imagine their business is just completely tied to like whatever the busiest tourist times of the year of are for Boston. Right? Like, yeah, you would think, I guess. Yeah. It's like the harsh winters. I imagine you're wishing you could, <laughs> You could maybe jettison the <laughs> the '80s sitcom theme if you were trying to attract locals, but yeah, it's all right. It was uh, it was an experience. Glad I did it. Um, don't necessarily need to do it again, and uh, decided not to bring anything from the gift shop uh, in my carry on bag. <laughs> so, but you can order it all online anyway. So. Oh, well. It's always there if you uh yes if you decide
Yes. If I need a uh, a norm bobblehead, <laughs> I, I know where to get it. What? <laughs> you never know when that need might arise, you know? Yeah. I try to keep on keeping on.